In 2019, of course, Mercedes have dominated Formula 1, but how they've dominated it is a lot more complicated than it actually seems. And what makes it so special compared to other top cars such as the Ferrari and the Honda-powered Red Bull? And in today's video, I'm going to look at what has made Mercedes be so great in 2019 and why their competitors have fallen away by looking at just how the top teams have developed in 2019. So if you want to find out how Mercedes have dominated this season, then make sure to check out this video. Now first, we are going to start off with already the 2019 Constructors World Champions and look at how they have been so great. But it wasn't looking so great, was it, in pre-season testing, as in the first pre-season test, Mercedes didn't bring that good of a car. As by their own admittance, the car they brought was very underdeveloped and was basically a basic version of what their 2019 car was going to be. But this was the plan for this team ever since they started fully working on the 2019 car. So once they turned up with their real 2019 car at the second pre-season test, we finally saw what they had to give. As at the second test, they turned up with a new revised front wing, a new T-wing, a new floor, and two fins either side of the S-duct. So basically, a new car compared to what they brought to the first test, which by again their own admittance was basically a midfield car, the car they brought to the first pre-season test. And of course, we know now that Mercedes did have a very good car in testing, so of course, they sandbagged and allowed other teams to get a bit more confident with what they had compared to what Mercedes had. But once we came to the Australian Grand Prix at Melbourne, they completely obliterated the field, as they finally showcased what their 2019 car was, and it was an absolute beast. As especially in qualifying, the way that car looked through the fast corners, it looked like it was on rails, and their main competitors, Ferrari, had no answer. Bahrain, though, was still a small reality check for the Silver Arrows that Ferrari was still there to be competing with them. But unfortunately for Ferrari, not for very long. As at the Chinese Grand Prix at Shanghai, Mercedes brought another update to their front wing, a new front wing end plate. This allowed them to stretch out the gap they had to Ferrari in the corners and made them dominate the Chinese and Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Races that Ferrari were expecting to be a lot better at. But the Mercedes development machine was already working in full force to keep the Silver Arrows on top. But then once we came to the Spanish Grand Prix, a Grand Prix where the biggest updates from all the teams are brought, the Brackley team stretched out their lead when it came to grip in the corners even further. As they brought new turning vanes and revised mirrors and that gave them probably their biggest advantage in the corners in the entirety of 2019. And from that period on, there has been no doubt about it that this team has had the best car when it comes to grip. And winning at racetracks such as Monte Carlo, Paul Ricard and the Hungara Ring has solidified how great their car is when it comes to grip in the corners. But we cannot doubt that their aerodynamic advantage has been closed in the second half of the season. Mainly because Ferrari and Red Bull improved their car, but also because... Mercedes have stopped bringing as many upgrades as they were bringing earlier on in 2019. As the only upgrades they really brought since the Austrian Grand Prix is one big one at Hockenheim and another one at Suzuka. For example, the updates at Hockenheim were to improve the cooling and also some new side deflectors. And at Suzuka, they further improved on that update to the side deflectors. And when it comes to that update at Suzuka, we will cover that soon in a future podcast episode. But even though the updates of course have improved the car speed as the season has gone on, we cannot doubt that fundamentally since the 2019 Formula 1 season began, this car has been the best on the grid. And that's been the case from Melbourne until right now at Suzuka. But what are the key differences between their car and the Ferrari? Well let's detail how Ferrari's season has gone in terms of development. So in testing, they did turn up with a car that was more ready for the 2019 Formula 1 season. As in the first and second test, they had about the same car. When of course rivals Mercedes had a completely different car for the second test. But coming away from testing, as we all know, Ferrari were the favourites to win in 2019. But after those lacklustre results in Melbourne, Shanghai and Bahrain... 
Ferrari started to rush the development of the Ferrari SF90 because they were desperate to save any title chances they had. So first up we had new bargeboard pieces and a new rear wing for Ferrari and Baku. And they brought even more parts to the Spanish Grand Prix but these weren't really working for them. They were not closing the gap in the corners in the way they were wanting to. Meaning that their title chances for 2019 were over before they really began. And the biggest problem for Ferrari when it came to the design of their 2019 car was the radical front wing design they had. A front wing design that was almost different from every team. And it was pretty clear that in the first 6 or 7 races this front wing design was simply not giving the downforce Ferrari were hoping for. So it was now time for them to start to solve that issue. So they brought a new front wing to the French Grand Prix. But still the updates were not working. And that is another key reason why Ferrari in terms of development have struggled in 2019. Because their developments were not really working until the Singapore Grand Prix. But despite Ferrari's updates not working that didn't stop them trying. As once we got to the Hungarian Grand Prix the final Grand Prix. Before the summer break, they continued to bring new parts to limit the deficit. As they brought these new boomerang wings to the bargeboard area of their car. But still, it wasn't quite working out for Ferrari until the Singapore Grand Prix. Even though they won at Spa and Monza, they won those races because of the power advantage they do have. They were still struggling a lot in the corners until again, the Singapore Grand Prix. Where with the new front nose cone and the new rear floor, Ferrari were a lot closer to Mercedes and Red Bull in terms of grip. Allowing Ferrari for the first time really since 2018 to on a regular basis compete for pole positions and race victories. And you have to say out of the top teams this update is probably the biggest update we've seen in 2019 in terms of the actual impact of the new parts. Because after that in Russia Ferrari got pole position and should have won the race and Suzuka Ferrari dominated qualifying. But again because Ferrari's updates in 2019 have just not worked out as much as they should have it's too little too late. If this had come a lot sooner in the season then maybe Ferrari could compete for the world championship but it's of course again too late. But what are really the differences between the Mercedes and Ferrari car that has made them so different? And made Mercedes of course have the overall better car. Well the biggest difference is the front end grip of the Mercedes and the lack of front end grip of the Ferrari. The front end grip has improved after Singapore but earlier on in 2019 it was a big problem. As you can see on these screenshots the Mercedes car was able to really get the nose into the corners a lot more than the Ferrari. And because of that the Ferrari then in the slower corners where you desperately need front end grip was really struggling. And if you look at these sector times from the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019 you can see in the final sector where all of the slow corners are Ferrari are miles off Mercedes. And that just shows you that earlier on in 2019 the differences in front end grip between one car and another. If we then go to the Singapore sector times though you can see the gap has closed quite a bit but again Mercedes are still better in that area. Another key difference has been tyre wear. Mercedes of course since they brought their new wheel rim innovation at the end of 2018 have been very good on tyre wear where Ferrari have now started to struggle as the Ferrari of the last couple of years has been a low drag kind of car. And we've seen plenty of races this season where Ferrari might have had a car that was as good in qualifying but in the race when tyre wear kicks in Ferrari simply can't keep up. For example at Silverstone Ferrari or Charles Leclerc were very close to pole position but in the race they were miles off in pace. And that was because on the softer compound tyres Ferrari simply could not keep their tyres together. And if we look at the most recent example of the tyre wear differences between the two teams. Let's look at the first stint of the Japanese Grand Prix and the differences between Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel. So you can see here for Sebastian Vettel in the first 16 laps in the first half of the first stint on the tyres of course he started on the soft compound of tyre. In the first stint he's in the 1 minute 34s but then drops off into the 1 minute 35s and then pits on lap 16 but then for Valtteri Bottas 
if you look at his first stint, the first 17 laps, he is able, because the car is a lot better on its tyres, he's able to consistently stay in the 1 minute 34s. And you can look at many races in 2019 and see that the Mercedes car at the end of tyre stints is a lot quicker than a Ferrari is. And the third big difference that actually does favour Ferrari is the straight line speed. As when we've come to power tracks in 2019, Ferrari have had the best car most of the time. And if we look here at the maximum speeds in qualifying of the Canadian Grand Prix, you can really see how powerful the Ferrari power unit is. Topping all the speed traps in basically every area. And then at the Italian Grand Prix later on in 2019, again, Ferrari are not right at the top, but they are a lot higher than Mercedes are. The racing points are up there, but they are up there, I think, because they set up with a bit of a lower drag concept for those races. But well, that's really the only area that the Mercedes team have really struggled in and it's not really got any better as 2019 has gone on. And in fact you could make the argument that Ferrari are actually getting better in terms of power compared to Mercedes. And that's probably the only worry that the Silver Arrows should have going into 2020 is that if Ferrari do get the aerodynamics of their car right for 2020 with the power Ferrari do have then that will make Ferrari very strong. But then again, the scary thing for Ferrari is that because Mercedes have not brought that many updates in 2019 since the Spanish Grand Prix, that means that Mercedes have concentrated on the 2020 car very early on. Because again, of the points advantage, Mercedes were able to build up on Ferrari in the first seven or eight races. So even though the Mercedes car right now is not as good as it was earlier on in 2019, do not count them out for 2020, retaining that dominance they had, for example, at the Spanish Grand Prix or Monaco Grand Prix. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they've been saving up their time and money to produce a monster of a 2020 car. But those are the top two teams. What about Red Bull? Well, the best way to describe the Red Bull car is that it's a worse version of the Mercedes car. Red Bull are strong in the same areas, but not as strong. And they are weak in the same areas, but weaker than Mercedes are. And if you look at the Red Bull, it's not massively different compared to what Mercedes have had, especially with the front wing design. It is a lot more similar to what Mercedes have had compared to Ferrari. But when it comes to that front wing design, they have had some struggles with it. As a couple times this season, they have had to bring a couple updates to it to really get more out of what they've got. For example, in Shanghai, they brought some slight improvements to the front wing. They did bring some new barge board pieces to the Spanish Grand Prix, but it wasn't massive. And they did close the gap to Mercedes in terms of grip, but again, it wasn't massive. Where Red Bull really improved for 2019 was at the Austrian Grand Prix, where they brought a new front wing design, as you can see right here. And that transformed their 2019. Because after that, they could then compete for race victories a lot more with Max Verstappen, who has been brilliant this season. And that's a big reason why the final four races before the summer break were so great for the Red Bull team. But since then, Red Bull have not really brought anything that big. They have brought, I believe, some new barge board pieces to the Russian Grand Prix. But again, they haven't brought a lot of new parts. I think that's probably similar to Mercedes. They're now starting to really concentrate on getting the 2020 car right. But I do think also that's partly why their pace has dropped off now compared to how it was such as at Silverstone or Hockenheim or Hungary. And when it comes to where Red Bull have been strong a week this season, again, it is very similar to the world champions. Red Bull in terms of grip do have a good car. The overall grip of the car is good, but it's not the best in Formula 1 like it was in 2018. And that's why parts of 2019 have not quite been what Red Bull were hoping for. Again, if you look at these sector times with the Spanish and Singapore Grand Prix, the Red Bull is a good car in terms of grip and better than the Ferrari, but not the best in Formula 1. Also, in a similar way to Mercedes, they've been very good on their tyres, and that's why at times they can beat Ferrari in the races. But their weaknesses are pretty simple. Again, they haven't got as much grip compared to Mercedes, and they don't really have the power as Honda this season at times have looked good, but if you compare it to the other manufacturers, I don't think Honda have that good of a power unit to really be 
competing at every Grand Prix in the podium positions. Again, if you look at these speed traps in Canada and Italy, the Honda power unit's not really pulling the type of power they want. And that is something, of course, for 2020 they are hoping does improve. But I think for Red Bull, as I said earlier on, I think when it comes to bringing new parts to their car, I think they are now really starting to concentrate on 2020. Because they don't want to start 2020 how they started 2019, which was a bit mediocre compared to how they ended 2018. But that, guys, is why Mercedes this season have been so good and have won the World Championship. But let me know in the comment section down below, guys. When it comes to the cars and the grip of the cars, what are the key differences for you? Let me know in the comment section down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button also for more content like this. And until my next video, guys, tomorrow at 12pm UK time, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.